In 2021, you were playing some great golf. You got all the way up to 48, I believe, in the world rankings, right? 47, uh, but who's counting? 47. <laughs> 47, sorry. 47 at, at 48 47 years old. At 48 years old. Now, you then had a pretty, I mean, at the time, a pretty dis difficult decision, I think, to, to come over to live. Uh, what was your motivating factor? It was not a difficult decision, was it? <laughs> uh, hell no. <laughs> it, was, it, was quite, it was quite interesting, actually. I was playing, uh, it actually, I, I had the, obviously, of course, we'd always, we'd heard of rumblings of going on and uh, that, obviously, Saudi Arabia and PIF were interested in golf and, coming into golf and I was playing my last round robin match of the uh, WGC match play against Lee Westwood uh, so a couple of old geriatrics going down the second and um, and, we're, and I've known Lee for you know we grew up together we played for England youth together um, played for England together um, and we're just so we had a great game and talking a lot and we're going down I think it's the second or the third he said uh if you hadn't approached from Livia and I was like no why would they want to talk to me um <laughs> and he's gone he said Brandy he says you're your top 50 or 55 in the world I think at the time he said trust me they're going to talk to you and I went like really he said they're going to talk to you and I thought right okay and I kind of didn't really give it too much you know I was concentrating on, on trying to get through the group and um, and it was after that that uh, um, you know we kind of made uh, an initial inquiry to uh, to live and and I guess the rest is history uh, but yeah when they were interested um, it was <laughs> for me at my stage of my career it was an absolute no brainer you know I, obviously I talked to my wife about it quite a bit I talked to my family um and yeah, they were a hundred percent behind me as they've always been. Um, it it was the easiest decision I had to make. Uh, of course, you know I've loved DP World European Tour. I loved the twenty one, twenty two years that I played there, uh, and I'll be forever grateful. And I'll always be a fan of that tour. Of course, I will. I've still got many good friends that play there, and I'm always looking out for them. I'm actually going to go to the PGA this year, the BMW, with a couple of friends at the Wisley, my home club. Uh, they always go on a Thursday and Friday, so I'm actually going to go as a spectator. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, That's brilliant. Awesome. So, uh, cliques gear? Are you going to be wearing the cliques gear? Oh, yeah. I'm going to be fully cliqued up. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I'll probably, I, might even, yes. I might even carry my bag around just for... Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so... Like anyone seen a Titleist it, 4? <laughs> <laughs> Even though it was an easy decision for me, like you said, I'll always be forever grateful for um, you know for 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 the European tour. For um, obviously, of course, you have to earn your place there, of course. So it's but if um, but obviously they do a, a wonderful job with what they do, and uh, um, it was it was a great twenty years of playing out there. I, I you know I've said many times, even though it took me a while to get my first win. If I had to do it all over again, I'd do it exactly the same. I wouldn't change a thing. You um, you that. you were shaking your head about how easy a decision it was. I got some <laughs> numbers for you. I like numbers. Five hundred eleven starts on the European Tour, DP World Tour, eight million six hundred twenty-one thousand plus change, the U.S. dollar equivalent of what you earned. Twenty-nine starts in Live Golf, nine point eight four eight. You cross ten million when you get your check from Houston next week. When we get there. Ten million dollars yeah. in. By the way, the league turns two years old the day after Houston. The yeah, day after Houston, yeah. we're officially two years old. Ten million. Yeah, that's mind-boggling. Uh, yeah, that, so I think my uh, my decision was is justified. But uh, <laughs> I look at it. I guess you could look at it that uh, Watkins won about a million more than me in about six starts this year. So, uh, <laughs> um, but. Um, no, it, like you say, it's it's given me now, um, you know, to be able to do what I want to do, you know, for the rest of my life and not really have to worry too much about it. Um, it's a safety net. I call it a safety it net. It is, yeah, it you is. Have a safety uh, net. You know, and as much as, like I said, you know, to uh, as much as I've loved playing DP World and, and European Tour, 
okay, okay, you know, I could have played better and won more money. Of course I could, but uh, that wasn't the case. Um, so at 49 years old, the opportunity came along and, um, you know, uh, I, I, like I said, to, I don't think there's anybody that would have turned that down at my age, that opportunity. Well, no, no. And nobody could no. get that deal now. There's not a 48, 49 year old with one win who could get no, that. I like to, I, you know, I still look at it today. I go, how many, how many 50 year olds are actually playing at the highest level? There's not many. Yeah. There's yeah. not many. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, by the way, all, we, we talk so much about the money and talk so much about how you make, but like all of it is deserved. Like it is so difficult to do what you did, which was to earn your way into the season being top 24 last season. Um, it, it's not just like a, it's not, it's not a joke that you're winning 9 million bucks. You know what I mean? Like you earned every dime and every dollar that you made. I want to ask you this question though. Do you feel like, you're playing your best golf now Great question. in the recent year? Um, am I playing my best golf right now? Probably not. Um, am I a better player than I ever was? Yes. And I have to thank, I don't want to kind of sound this is, you know, we're thanking Liv for everything, but I have to thank Liv for that. Because, and I've said this on record many times, that go back five years ago, I would play against DJ Brooks, Bryson, Cam Smith, maybe once, maybe twice a year if I made it into an Open or if I qualified for a US Open or the US PGA. Now I get to play against them 14 times a year. So, and, um, you know, I'm a pre pre pretty realistic guy. I know they're better players than me, and I'm, I, I'm fine with that. They have, you know, Brooks is probably one of the best of our generation right now with five majors. So if I'm going to compete against this guy, and DJ and those guys, John Rand. I, I I gotta bring it. I gotta bring the best that I have. If I don't, I'm, I'm not gonna be anywhere. So that just for me, that just I think it's just a psychological thing. You, I have to play. I have to play. You know, I can't compete against those guys off the tee. I know that, and that's fine. Um, but I can be better than them from 150 yards in. Um, and that's where you know I've tried to be better um but yeah yeah i i am just a I, am i playing my best golf right now probably not i'm playing pretty good of course you can always play better but i'm the best player that i've ever been um, i love that but if, and i think way, that's, funny... that's just that's just i think that's just being playing against the caliber of players you're playing against week in week out uh, by the way, funny you say what you just said, because statistically on our league, you beat 50 players in terms of uh, greens and regulation. You're fourth in greens and regulation, hit 47.87% of greens. Um, only Paul Casey, Joaquin, and Brendan Grace are above you at the moment. So you're obviously doing something right. Um, you are 46th in driving distance, which you've just alluded to, but you hit the most greens. You hit certainly top five of the most greens. Yeah, you know, the, 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 for me is, is you know, um, I, yeah, I'm working with the same coach, Tim Barter, for the last 23 years. Um, I know I know if, if, if my swing's not feeling that great, my miss is not that bad. Yeah, you know, my miss is, you know, I... Um, you know, I'm probably going to shoot myself in the foot here. I can't remember the last time I hit a professional <laughs> ball off a tee. Can't touch, touch it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Holy that's, shit. That's good. That's huge. That is huge. So that's Mo Norman it's, shit right there. It, so I know that um, my miss is never going to be, you know, missing fairways by 20 yards or anything like that. You know, if I miss a fairway, it's probably by three, four. That kind of thing. So you're always, I, I'm always in play. I'm always in play. So, um, and that, you know, and I've got to give credit to Tim for that. Um, you know, the, the golf swing that we've built over the last however many years is that it's just, it's very low maintenance. You know, I've, I've seen Tim twice this year. I spent four or five days with him in um, in January in uh, at the Floridian down in, in Jupiter. And I've seen him once at the Wisley since then. And I'm, I'm seeing him on Thursday. And I know that we probably won't work on anything. We'll just make sure that everything's where we need it to be. 
And, and that's fine. You know, we haven't worked on anything for 15 years. <laughs> we haven't. Um, it's just making sure that, right, this is this is what we want to see. These are the things we want to see. Um, um, I don't know. I've just had this kind of probably one of my best traits of golf is, you know, once I have a good feel for something, I can just repeat it. Um, and fortunately, I've had that for the last, you know, four or five years. And, uh, you yeah, know, it's paying off. Yeah, what a perfect student yeah. you must be for Tim. I didn't know Tim was an instructor actually till I heard he worked with you, and I just heard that a few weeks yeah. ago. Uh, the American audience probably doesn't know the name Tim Barter, but uh, you you will have seen him. He's on is it Sky Sports, and he does almost all of their interviews during their covers that you often see on Golf Channel, the DP World Tour. He's a fantastic interviewer. He's a sneaky, funny, funny guy when I've been around him because we we met. Uh, through doing Solheim's and and yeah, and, uh, Ryder Cups, and Ryder Cups, yeah, and it was always a competition as to who got the interviews on that 18th <laughs> green, and and nobody beat Tim Barter, nobody beat him to get that interview. <laughs> he, he was he was awesome. He'd be he'd buy, he'd fly by me. He'd always get the fastest cart because you have to when you're doing a Solheim or something, you have to jump and do a bunch of interviews. He'd always have the fastest cart. And he'd be gone. He'd be up oh, there yeah, before. Yeah. Oh, that's even, even if you've been in a car with him, he. He, he, yeah. likes to get, he likes to get wherever he needs to get. He likes he likes to get there quickly. So, uh, um, but no, I enjoy uh, my time around. We've had a, I always we've yeah. had a great relationship for the last twenty three years. Uh, yeah. Of course, you have your ups and downs. You have your your lovers' tiffs, so to speak, um, <laughs> about things. But uh, we generally see we generally see the golf swing very very similar, uh, and that's. Uh, um, and then that's a good thing. You know, I've said many times, and Tim knows this, you know, Tim isn't the best coach in the world, but he's the best coach in the world for me. Uh, and that's why, uh, you know, I've always said, um, as long as I'm playing golf, he'll be, he'll be stood behind me, watching me hit it. So there's no one else to do it. Oh, that's very, that, that needs to go on a t-shirt. That, that <laughs> right there. And, and, and then you need to print that and give that to Tim for his birthday. We'll give one. We'll give one to Jerry as well, and you can go with the hat. Yeah, there we go. By the by, the way, no provisional balls. Fuck, I hit like three provisional balls on the first tee. No, I'm actually, like well, zero. I'm, play, I'm playing tomorrow morning with Laura Cantor and uh, a couple of good friends, so I, I I I can see it coming straight off the first tee. Right. You know what my you, you know what my friends used to do uh, back when I was living in Orlando. Speaking of first tees. I, you know, the Ritz, right? Uh, Fulte, the Ritz. Oh yeah. I love it. My Orlando. favorite course the in central Florida. Li yeah. It literally is the widest fucking fairway on the first. Right. <laughs> and I, it's, I teach. It's pretty wide. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very wide. Is it as wide as an Andrews? Is it's, it's uh, no, it's no, 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 no. But it's no. also very soft. I mean, the ball's not going to run a hundred yeah. yards. Right, yeah. Okay. No, but this, yeah. to be fair, this is also during winter. Anyway, my point is I'll stand on that first tee and I'll play with David Byrne, a buddy of mine uh, who won the big break. And I would tee it up and he would have, I kid you not, he would have a sleeve of golf balls in his pocket. And just as I'm, just as I'm about to hit the golf ball, he just points right like this. And as soon as my ball leaves the club face, he would throw a ball right next to my foot and it's just straight right out of bounds. <laughs> I was uh I was playing <laughs> I was playing the PGA Tour qualifying school back when they had an actual qualifying school to get to the PGA Tour. It was down at Greenleaf, south of Orlando. And I had to start on the 10th hole. It was like the fifth or sixth day, and I was way the hell out of it. And the tenth hole on the this shitty ass course was about as wide as a cart path, and I was playing with David Jackson, was the guy you won't know him, or and I can't remember who the other was. And we we you get shuttled out there, and we get on the tee. I'm I'm first up to hit. I go, guys, I'm playing a Titleist three, and then I dropped a Titleist two, and I said my provisional will be a two because I knew I was going to be hitting it, and damn sure I did. Hit a one iron out of bounds. <laughs> I guess, I guess there is a reason why we're. In these commentators, yes. <laughs> <Commentating>. <laughs>